विदेश मंत्री एस जयशंकर यूएन में बोल रहे हैं आपको सीधे वहां ले चलते हैं यूनाइटेड नेशन देर इज मच दैट इंडिया हैज टू शेयर मिस्टर प्रेजिडेंट द वर्ल्ड इज विटनेसिंग एन एक्सेप्शनल पीरियड ऑफ टर्म ऑयल एज इट इज स्ट्रक्चरल इनिक्विटीज एंड अन इवन डेवलपमेंट हैव इम्पोज बर्डन्स ऑन द ग्लोबल साउथ बट स्ट्रेसिस हैव बीन एग्रेवेटेड by the impact of the covid-19 pandemic and the repercussions of ongoing conflicts tensions and disputes as a result socio economic gains of recent years have been rolled back resources for sustainable development are severely challenged and many countries really struggle to make ends meet navigating the future appears even more daunting today at this juncture it was with a sense of exceptional responsibility that india took up the presidency of the g20 our vision of one earth one family one future sought to focus on the key concerns of the many not just the narrow interests of a few in the words of prime minister narendra modi it was to bridge divides dismantle barriers and sow seeds of collaboration that nourish a world where unity prevails over discord and where shared destiny eclipses isolation the new delhi g20 leaders declaration articulates our collective ability to do so excellencies friends at a time when east west polarization is so sharp and the north south divide so deep the new delhi summit also affirms that diplomacy and dialogue are the only effective solutions the international order is diverse and we must cater for divergences if not differences the days when a few nations set the agenda and expected others to fall in line are over as the united nations itself symbolizes finding common ground is an imperative to listen to others and to respect their viewpoints this is not weakness it is the basics of cooperation only then can collective efforts on global issues be successful recognizing that growth and development must focus on the most vulnerable we began the g20 presidency by convening the voice of the global south summit this enabled us to hear directly from 125 nations and place their concerns on the g20 agenda as a consequence issues which deserve global attention got a fair hearing more than that the deliberations produce outcomes that have great significance for the international community mr president it was also noteworthy that at india's initiative the african union was admitted as a permanent member of the g20 by doing so we gave voice to an entire continent which has long been its due this significant step in reform should inspire the united nations a much older organization to also make the security council contemporary broad representation is after all a prerequisite for both effectiveness and credibility the outcomes of the new delhi g20 summit will surely resonate for years ahead among them is an action plan for sustainable development goals a crucial need of the day equally important are the high principles of life lifestyle for environment and the green development pact as they shape our approach to our planet's future the transformative role of digital public infrastructure has also 
finally been recognized. As the salience of women-led development in building an inclusive and progressive society. The reform of international financial institutions has been given due weight, as has the resolution of debt vulnerabilities. Friends, the New Delhi G20 outcomes are ex expressed both as larger policies and as specific initiatives. They could be about building cities for tomorrow or fighting corruption, eliminating hunger or delivering quality education, ending plastic pollution or preserving the ocean-based economy, or for that matter, enhancing food security or even mapping global skills. Some address long-standing issues like gender divide and climate action. Others focus on new concerns such as responsible harnessing of artificial intelligence. All in all, we have placed for the world's consideration a set of actionable propositions, constructive solutions, and new directions. Even as we encourage collective endeavors, India also seeks to promote cooperation with diverse partners. From the era of non-alignment, we have now evolved to that of Vishwa Mitra, a friend to the world. This is reflected in our ability and willingness to engage with a broad range of nations, and where necessary, harmonize interests. It is visible in the rapid growth of the Quad, a mechanism today so relevant to the Indo-Pacific. It is equally apparent in the expansion of the BRICS grouping of independent-minded nations, or in fact, the emergence of the I2U2 combination. Recently, we hosted the creation of the India-Middle East-Europe Economic Corridor, IMEC. The forging of the Global Biofuels Alliance was another notable development. This willingness to work in an open-minded manner on specific domains is now a defining characteristic of the emerging multipolar order. Mr. President, all nations pursue their national interests. We, in India, have never seen that as being in contradiction with global good. When we aspire to be a leading power, this is not for self-aggrandizement, but to take on greater responsibility and make more contributions. The goals we have set for ourselves will make us different from all those whose rise preceded ours. India demonstrated this during the COVID through the Vaccine Maitri Initiative. Our endeavors, like the International Solar Alliance and the Coalition for Disaster Resilient Infrastructure, have gathered wide support. Our espousing of the International Year of Millets is enhancing global food security today. We have built development partnerships with 78 nations across geographies. And we have also been first responder in disaster emergency situations. The people of Turkey saw that in February, as did those in Syria. Our commitment is understandably even greater, closer home. When Sri Lanka experienced a severe economic crisis, it was India that first stepped forward. But even in distant regions, partners such as the Pacific Islands have appreciated our contributions to meet their needs in health, in technology, and in climate action. 